Kendall Gears, you were one of the most important artists that uh, stand out in the 90s from a peripheral country. How was your uh, career's beginning in, in, in South Africa? Well, I mean, it's an interesting question because you're already in the question of presupposing that there's some kind of distinction or difference. I think what happened in the 90s is that um, you had a, the borders began to crumble economically, politically, philosophically, and so you had an influx into Europe or, and a recognition of artists from the periphery. But from the point of view of the periphery, we were always part of the world. We're, the discussion was always there because don't forget that South Africa was first a colony from the Netherlands and then afterwards a colony from the Dutch, and there was always contact with Europe. So you know, it was a natural progression to be able to especially in the languages of art, be able to make the dialogue in Europe. And, you know, I think that what's important as well is to think that what makes a difference in South Africa is that we speak the international language, we speak the discourse of art, but we speak it slightly differently because we have different experiences. And that's what, you know, creates a difference in terms of what we make. Absolutely. Uh, your work is uh, powerful, in my opinion, and mm -hmm. not only in my opinion, because uh, you balance the form and concept. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, you use uh, different media, video, installation, sculpture, painting. Uh, how can you get, how can you reach this balance? Well, I think it's, it's about deciding where does the work of art exist. And I think that a lot of it's certainly in the last 50 years, there's been this preoccupation with art as an object, with this idea of art as a commodity. And we it especially becomes rampant in the last you know, 10 to 15 years where art becomes some kind of exchange or some kind of commodity or some kind of um, object to be traded, traded. But in fact, art for me is about a spirit, it's about a channeling. And if we root the art inside experience, if we root the art inside spirit, we have a different reading of art and in that way it becomes a form of liberation um, and it's not about the material form but what is projected through the form so that the, 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 the content speaks through the form rather than the other way around. Absolutely. Uh, your work is uh, mainly focused on uh, political and uh, societal mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What, what's your opinion about the emergency we are living in this period, in this month? Well, you know, the, you know, the year began in the most insane way with this idea of Brexit. And then we had the COVID and then we have Black Lives Matter. You know, these are not separate things. These are all about the deracination of our humanity, the deracination of culture, the deracination of what roots us inside the world. You know, COVID spread from Wuhan, from one person in Wuhan, to infect the entire planet by breathing in and breathing out. We're not living isolated lives. We're not disconnected from one another. We're not disconnected from the world that we're inhabiting. And if our breath can unite us. Imagine politically, socially, culturally, and in terms of our bodies, the spaces we're inhabiting, the, the spaces that we are forms of consumption. You know, it's important to, to think of human beings as guests on the planet. We're not the hosts, we're the guests, and we're one amongst many guests. Uh, other human beings, other cultures, but also other forms of other species other animals and other forms of intelligence. Some of them are visible, some of them are not visible. It's important that we, we behave with respect to the guests, the other guests. And in that way, you know, politics is really, it's a power relation. It's a dynamic, it's an exchange, it's a dialogue. And if we were a little bit more humble to stop assuming that we are in control of that power relation, but rather we are participating and as participants, we could be more generous. And in that way, you know, then, then suddenly it's not a question of Black Lives Matter, but a question of how do we change the way we live to have smaller political footprints, to have smaller ecological footprints, and to have less ego in order to make the world a better place. Absolutely. And 
What is the meaning of your presence here in this uh, exhibition in Human in Barletta? I think that's more a question to ask the curator than me. Um, but I really love this idea of the African American who is in fact Cuban. Now, you know, that speaks <laughs> yes. about that speaks about the slave trade. That speaks about um, the diaspora from Africa two, three, four, five generations later. Then you have the Russian artist and then you have the white African. You know, I, I love the contradictions that are implicit in all those different ways of looking at identity. And what's also important is that Cuba, South Africa and the Soviet Union were three ideological structures that fell apart. They fell apart in 1990 at the end of the Cold War. And when, when that ideological structure falls apart, when those, those fascist politics disintegrate, what's left? And I think it, you know, the artists who come out of that process are slightly different than the artists who, who are still living ideological dreams, who still don't understand the fragility of politics and the fragile relationship between human experience and that dynamic, how it gets translated in terms of power relations, which we will call politics. Okay, uh, Juicy points out the, the issues that the exhibition here, here is uh, kept in, a, in a, an unusual place. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, uh, why you accepted to, to be here and it's not a, a, a conventional museum in <laughs> yes. San Francisco or sure. Paris. Well, you know, I'm a great fan of exhibiting in unconventional spaces because it makes it real. I don't like the White Cube Gallery because White Cube WC is a toilet. It's an area of quarantine. It's an isolation. Let's be, let's be honest. You can exhibit anything in a White Cube and get away with it. You can't exhibit anything in a space like this because the space is so powerful. The space is so embodied. The space is so strong that you better have strong work otherwise the space will destroy you. Absolutely. And that's a challenge to be able to work in a real living space rather than the isolation chamber of a white cube. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Kendall. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.